Okay, let's look at using execute SQL task to call a stored procedure to set some SSIS variables. No results set, just using the output parameters of the stored procedure and the return value of the stored procedure. I've got a stored procedure ready, which I've got hidden over here somewhere. Here it is. It's just a really silly stored procedure. It doesn't do anything useful. Um, so it just allows us to pass in a couple of input parameters and get back a couple of output parameters uh, as well as a return value. So the first output parameter is just set to be the length of the input parameter string times the input number and the second parameter is just set to be hard-coded piece of text uh, and the input string concatenated at the end. Uh, the return value is just the input number times two. Um, that's it. No use to it at all apart from demonstrating input parameters, output parameters and the return value. You can have many uh, output parameters of um, lots of different data types. You can only have one return value. It has to be an integer. Return value, uh, if it's used, it's typically a status or some sort of error number. Right, let's see this amazing stored procedure in action. I've got a piece of test harness code here. Doesn't do very much. It just declares a couple of variables there. Uh, there's another variable there for the uh, return value from the stored procedure. Here we're calling the stored procedure. Um, this is the return value. Uh, to take from the stored procedure. Uh, these are the two input parameters, a number of two, a string of apple. Uh, these are the two output parameters defined. And there we go. So just to show what happens to the output parameter variables, there's a select at the end. So we call this, uh, we get 10 as the output num. This is the length of the string times a number, so that's 5 times 2, 10, that's fine. Um, the output string, you gave me an apple, uh, that's the message string output, which was, you gave me an apple, no, you gave me an, it's a hard-coded piece of text, and this apple is the, from the input parameter. And finally, the return uh, was 4, which was twice the input number of 2. So that's good, it works, it runs, it gives up some the right values. Right, let me put this management studio to one side and get back to the uh, visual studio. So what we need to do now is we need a whole bunch of variables to play with. Uh, so what do we need? We need the multiplier as the input number. Don't worry too much about scope, we'll just keep it to the package level. Uh, in 32, then we'll give that a value of 2. That's fine. Next one, we need string, we'll call that the fruit. Uh, make that a string. And we'll set it to apple. Next one. Uh, the output number I need to set that to anything in particular uh, output string set that to string give that the well we don't need to give that anything that's fine and then finally we need uh, an integer to take the return value. So I think that's it. Uh, and close that and move on to configuring execute SQL task. Right, let's configure it for OLADB. We'll do two examples. First example using OLADB, using OLADB connection manager. And then we'll do a second example for ADO.net. But sticking with OLADB, we need a statement in there. I'll just paste one in I've got ready. 
and bring it up to have a look at it. So that's it. Uh, just executing the stored procedure and the question marks are placeholders for the variables we're going to map in in a moment. Um, and the outs are just short form of output. output. Uh, you can use keyword out or keyword output. Let's get rid of the magnifier. Uh, OK to that. And move on to the parameter mapping. Uh, usual troubles of being able to see what's going on. You just stretch it out a bit. And add in the first mapping. So this is going to be the return value. So the direction in this case needs to be return value. Uh, and it's a be short. And the parameter name will do an LADB. So this needs to be zero. And in the next one, this is the multiplier. Uh, it's just a straight input. It's going to be a short. And its parameter name is going to be 1. Next, I'm going to have the fruit. It's an input. And this time it's going to be and then varchar, parameter name 2, and parameter size 50 characters. And next, the output number, which in this case it's one of our output parameters. So if we output there, it's going to be a short, and this is parameter name 3. And the last one, I think, the output string. Going to be an output. It's going to be an envarchar, and it's going to be parameter name four. Remember, it's all ADB, and parameter names are numbered. So the zero means that's the first question mark in the T SQL line. It's the second question mark, third question mark, etc. Um, envarchar. I'll just make that a fifty before we forget. And that's the variables all mapped to the SQL statement. So I'll locate that, and that should be our execute SQL task configured to call the store procedure. Right now for the exciting bit to see if it works. Um, we'll just add in a breakpoint. Um, so break on post execute, so we can see what the variables are like after it's executed. So we can do that and run it. And it's caught on the breakpoint. Um, let's bring up the variables and just copy them all into the watch window, so we can see what their values are. So there's our input parameter set to apple, uh, our input parameter set to 2, uh, and that's good because that's our output parameter, and it's the number of characters of apple, 5 times 2, 10, so that's right. Um, there's the output parameter, which was the you gave me an. Uh, which is the fixed text with apple concatenated on the end from the input parameter. So that looks good. And there's the return value, which is just twice the input number. So that's good too. So that looks like it's worked fine. Let me just stop this running. 
and that's fine. That worked. Right now for the ADO.NET example. Just get rid of the LADV one and start again. It's just clean while doing it. And let's configure. And so, ADO.NET this time. And an ADO.NET connection manager. And the SQL statement. Had one ready is this time. It's just the name of the uh, store procedure. No parameters, no exec. That's it. What we do need to be careful to remember to do is to tell the AD, ADO.NET uh, connection manager that this is a store procedure. So we need to set that to true. We need to set is query store procedure to true. And then parameter mapping. Again, we've got to stretch it out if we want to see what the column headings are. There we go. And add in the first one. So this is going to be the return value, which is return value. 32 parameter name this time. I don't think it actually matters with the return value. I like to give it at ret um, parameter size minus one's fine. So then the next parameter is the multiplier, which is an input into 32, and the parameter name. The parameter name has to match the procedure parameter name. So we need to put in here at num. Add the next one in. So this is a input parameter as well. This time it's a string. And we have to call it Extra, extra, same name as the procedure parameter name. And we have to tell it it's 50 characters big. So then we need the first output parameter, which is the output num1. We have to tell it it's an output parameter. It's an int32, and we need to tell it the parameter name, which is at len string times num, as its name. And the final parameter to map is the second output parameter for this example, and that's the string. Tell it it's an output parameter. So it's a string, give it its parameter name, and tell it it's 50 characters big. So, let me just see if this looks about right. Yeah, it's fine. And those, those are the uh, parameters mapped up. So we have a just yeah, that looks good. So we'll OK to that. And get ready to test it. So again, we need to just give it a breakpoint. Just to see if, so that we can see the variable values. Um, break when, break on post execute. And give it a run. This time we've already got our watch set up and we can see it's fine too. We've got all the values we need in the output variables and in the return value. So that's fine, it's worked. Stop it running. 
and we're complete. Maybe just a quick reminder about the parameter mappings. Um, in our first example, we had question marks within the SQL as placeholders and the parameters remained 012, etc. In the second example for ADO.NET, um, no placeholder needed in the SQL if you call it with the is query store procedure set to true. And then the parameters were actually named in the same for the same names as the store procedure. So there you go. Right, thanks for watching and we're done.